So before we move back to the project that we've been making, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is client effects. Now, client effects are basically functions that run in the client, the browser, when a certain tracked state value changes. For example, you might have a signal called count that stores a number, and that count value might change. And when it does change, you might want to run some code to do something. And that code would be a client effect. Now, if you're coming from React, this is going to be a bit like using the use effect hook. But whereas in React, we have to manually add different effect dependencies to track them. So the effect knows when to rerun. In SolidJS, we don't have to do that. Solid automatically tracks any signals that we use inside the effect and then runs the effect anytime one of those changes. So let's have a look at some examples. So first off, we have this signal right here, count, which starts at zero. And if we take a look at the result tab, you can see zero right here because we output it in the template. We also have this store for the person and we output the first name and the last name right here as well. But we're going to do an example using this count signal first of all. So what I'm going to do is uncomment this and it's just a set interval which fires a function every one second. And that function uses the set count function, the setter, to update the value of the count. So it takes the current count and adds one to it. So every second it's been increased by one and we see that over here. Now what I'm going to do is create a effect. So create effect like so, which is going to run a function every time the count changes. So we have to import create effect up here from solid JS and we pass a function as an argument. And this function is going to fire every time one of its dependencies changes. Now, if I just say console log here, for example, and put hello, then it's going to run that and we see it down here in the console, but it's never going to run again because it doesn't have any dependencies. And this is only going to rerun when any of its dependencies change. Now, by dependencies, I mean any kind of reactive values. So, for example, this could be a dependency right here, this count value. So, if I instead log out the count value like so, then every time it changes, then it's automatically going to rerun this function right here. This is now a dependency. And like I said, in React, you had to manually add a dependency array right here. You don't have to do that in Solid. So what I'm also going to do is do a little if check right here. And I'm going to say if the count is going to be equal to five, at that point, I want to clear the interval so it stops going up. And at that point, this function is going to stop running because it's only rerunning when its dependencies, the count value in this case, changes. So I'm going to say clear interval and it's int, which is the name of this constant. So take a look at this. It's going to go all the way to five. And then when it gets to five, it's not going to go up anymore because we've cleared that interval and this effect stops running. All right. So let's do another example. I'm going to come down here and say create effect. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll comment out this code right here because we don't need that anymore. And inside create effect here, I'm going to fire a function. And that function is going to output the person. So console.log the person. Remember, that is this thing. Let me just get rid of that. That is this thing up here. All right. So it should then log this every time the person changes, right? Well, let's try changing that. I'm going to create a button and close this off. Inside the button, I will just say update the name. And then I'm going to add a click event to this. So on click and set that equal to a function. Now I've already created a function change name. So I'll copy that and paste in here. Now this function uses set person to go into that person, change the name property then the last property and it changes it to Finch. So this right here. So we're changing the name of the person. And in that case, surely when we do that, it's going to run this effect function right here because we're changing the person and this is a dependency. Well, let me try this out. I'm going to go to output then back over here and we don't see the button. Let me see why that is. I'm going to scroll up and it says create effect is not defined. Okay. We've made a spelling error, create effect. All right. So we see it once there. Now, if I click on this, the name updates, but we don't see this run again. Now, why is that? Because the person is a dependency. So this should run again. But remember, when we talked about stores, we said that every different property value is basically its own signal. 
So it doesn't see this as a whole value that's changing. And it sees this as its individual value that's changing. So just because we're using person here, it's not going to trigger a rerun. We have to be kind of granular in our dependencies that we're using. If I say person.name, that's still not going to be enough because if I try to update the name, it's not going to run down here. Okay. Even though we're updating the name and we're specifying here person.name, we have to be more granular. We have to say last because that's the property we're updating. So person.name.last. And now what I'm going to do is go back over here and load this again, update the name. And now we can see it outputs Finch, which is the last name that we changed. So we have to be really specific when we're using our dependencies inside create effect. Now you might be thinking, well, what are the different use cases of this create effect thing? Well, one such use case could be to have an effect redirect a user if they ever log out. So there might be a button on a website where they log out, it sends that request, logs them out, changes some state in the component or in the application, and that state would be a dependency in create effect. And when that changes and goes to null, we could then redirect the user programmatically inside this create effect function. So that's just one use case. Now we've not looked at redirects or anything like that. I just wanted to outline some of the use cases for create effect. And we might use create effect in our project as well for other things in the future. I think in the next lesson, I wanna go back to our project because I know we've been using the SolidJS Playground for the last two lessons. And I wanna talk about something called context and we're gonna use a store with that context.